In 1998, a Korean company, Seihan Information Systems, changed history creating the first portable solid-state audio player. The MPMAN F10 came with 32 or 64 megabytes of non-expandable internal memory. To put this into perspective, the Apple's iPod was three years away, and when it came out it had a conventional hard disk drive inside. This doesn't necessarily indicate bad technical judgment on the Apple's part. At that time, using a built-in hard disk drive allowed Steve Jobs to claim The biggest thing about iPod is it holds a thousand songs. Steve Jobs rebooted the legal music market first by selling songs a la carte for 99 cents per song, and then by building in the synchronization with iPod into iTunes. He created a new system to sell, distribute and store music. The MP Man, on the other hand, was just a humble device that played whatever files were loaded into it. DRM free, no questions asked. So it wasn't surprising that Frank Crichton, associate director of anti piracy for the Recording Industry Association of America, said that the MP3 player has no function other than playing material that was stolen from record companies. The weird looking F30 came and went unnoticed, but the F35 was a real deal. Smaller than prior models, expandable with smart media cards powered by a single AA battery and a Kuwip with built-in radio and a voice recorder. It came with earbuds and a wired remote control. The F60 is a further development of the F35. It has similar size and shape but different button arrangement. It is surreal that the website I bought it from is still online and shows the same exact page that appeared on my computer 20 years ago. The price shown, $129 for the T6 variant with 64 megabytes of built-in memory, is exactly the price I paid back then. It is about as thick as a cassette case, but significantly smaller in two other dimensions. The power comes from a single AA battery located at the bottom. After different MP3 files with bit rates from 24 kilobits per second to 320 kilobits per second, and the player had no problems with any of them. The most popular bitrate for MP3s has been 128 kilobits per second. This rate is good enough for casual listening and is convenient for calculating the required storage size. One minute takes about one megabyte. The player uses smart media cards, which were popular 20 years ago but failed to capture the market because their capacity was limited to 128 megabytes. A 128 megabyte card fits about two hours of music. They were sold for about $50 20 years ago and they are still sold for the same price now on eBay because they are not made anymore. And people who sell them probably pull them out from all digital cameras, which also use these cards. The monochrome screen 3x2 cm shows tons of information. Battery charge, equalizer preset, free space available in the built-in memory and on the card, volume, the number of tracks and the current track number, track time played, the files encoding parameters and the track name at the bottom. Sadly, there is no crossfade and no gapless playback. With the original firmware there was an audible click at the start of each file, a later firmware update fixed it by adding a quick fade out, fade in between songs. The world's first and the world's best MP3 player, as it was advertised, came with its own file manager and its own device driver, which is why I am using this ancient Sony Via machine, built for Windows 98, but running Windows 2000 now. 256 megabytes of RAM, the hard disk has been upgraded to 40 gigabytes. I tried capturing the screen, but the tools I use require at least Windows 7. The player stores files in a proprietary format, moreover it doesn't allow to move the files from the player onto the computer. No doubt this was done to appease record industry bigwigs. The Ampaman file manager has three panes. The left is the host computer, the right is the content of the player. Built-in memory on the top, removable memory on the bottom. So you just drag the files over or use a function key. For someone who uses Spotify or Deezer or Apple Music, this should look almost as old-fashioned as recording a mixtape on a cassette. After you uploaded all the files, disconnect from the computer, insert the headphones and play some music. There is no Bluetooth. It powers off and starts up very quickly and it can resume from the last played position. Great for audiobooks and long albums. How long? A 128MB smart media card fits about 2 hours of audio encoded at 128 kbps. I think 2 hours per card is a reasonable capacity, convenient if you want to change the cards from time to time. This is what I was thinking of doing. 
This pattern harkens back to the olden days of physical media like cassettes and CDs and it proved outdated. No one replaces or exchanges memory cards. Steve Jobs' idea of syncing a digital player's content first with your computer and then with Apple's servers had won. When you plug in the firewire cable of your iPod into your Mac, automatically iTunes is launched and all of your iTunes songs and playlists are automatically downloaded into iPod. In 2010s, this pattern has been replaced by streaming. No one stores files on device anymore. So that's it for today. Please subscribe to be notified of my later videos and have fun playing your legally downloaded MP3 files.